we're going to learn about Baba Banda Singh Bahadur today. And one thing to remember, the courage that I'm going to show you, uh, talk about in this story, all comes from Simran. What he just did gives us so much courage, so much energy, so much power, making us superhuman, making us do things beyond what is imaginable. Okay? It comes from Simran. Right? Right? The one word that is going to give us energy. Um, so, Bandasin Bahadur, who has heard of Bandasin Bahadur? Who has not heard of Bandasin Bahadur? Good. Baba Bandasin Bahadur was a great Sikh general and the leader of the Khalsa after Guru Gobind Singh Ji passed away. So he was born at, as Madhudas Bairagi. I'm sorry, he was born as? I said that wrong. Born as? Lachmandas. Okay? Way at the north of India. Okay? And he came uh, down all the way. He's born in 1670. Point of reference, Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj was born in 1660, 1666. Right? So right about the same age. Right? And I was born? 1976. All right, so just to give you an idea of this is the map of India, okay? This is Delhi, this is Lahore, Kashmir, so he's born right about here. And through his life, he travels all the way down to the south of India, and he settles right about here in Nandir, okay? He becomes a sadhu, um, and He's basically a yogi. Um, he settles in Nanded on the bank of the river Godavari. So if you go to Hazur Sahib today, Hazur Sahib is where? Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. Who knows Hazur Sahib? Jyoti Jyoti passed away in Hazur Sahib. That's way in the south of India. Uh, so he does a great deal of meditation with mantras, yogasans, and he gets a lot of supernatural powers, okay? You can get supernatural powers um, by these kind of yogasans, meditations, mantras, mantras, right? If you focus on them, you can get power from these mantras. Um, and he was able to call out the rain. If the farmers needed rain, he could actually summon rain to come down, okay? It was that powerful. Um, he could make, like if someone sitting where he doesn't want them, he could actually make them fall. He had these little cute little powers or tricks. Um, but soon he was helpful to people, but who, soon he also became arrogant. Okay, if someone came to visit him, he would do these little tricks just to impress them and to kind of insult them and embarrass them. So Sadhu started to avoid uh, coming to meet him. All right. Now, in the meantime, what's happening in Punjab? So 1704, okay? So the Khalsa was established in 1699. 1699, Visakhi, when Guru Sahib took out his sword and asked for five heads. Um, so 1704 was the uh, where Guru Sahib left Anandpur, uh, the Shihidiya of uh, the Vade Sahib Zade and the Chote Sahib Zade, right? It was 1704. So Guru Sahib makes it to Machiwada jungle, and there he meets with a man who comes and relays the entire story of the Shihidi of the Chote Sahib Zade, okay? Uh, where they were in Sarhan, and Wazir Khan, uh, the governor of Sarhan, in his court, uh, they were condemned to be uh, bricked alive. Right? We remember the story? Uh, <coughs> so Guru Sahib at that moment takes his arrow and he plucks out a weed from the ground. And what does he say? Arman, what does he say? Nice and loud. Today, Today the Mughal Empire has been uprooted. Right. Its days are numbered. That was the second part of what he said. All right, he uprooted this weed, and he said, "Today, <laughs> the roots, uh, the Mughal Empire has been uprooted. So the decline of the Mughal Empire started from this moment. Okay, they were at their height. Remember that map? Remember Ajit? The map with all of India controlled by. Show me all of India. All of India. Very good. Controlled by uh, Aurangzeb." 
and that was the height of their uh, expansion. Okay, from this moment, the decline of the Mughal Empire started. So Guru Sahib then makes it out of the Suba of Sarhan. So he gets away from this area of Sarhan. And he does, he uh, goes and he writes the f final copy of the Guru Granth Sahib, which is our Guru today. Uh, he does a lot of Parchar. So how many Sikhs were in the Battle of Chamkoa? Who remembers? It was 40, right? 40, 43, right? 40. Including Guru Sahib and the three sons of So when we left, so of course, I have, there were five. Five Khalsa plus scattered around Punjab, maybe a few more, right? So the Panch Pyare said, Maharaj, if you leave Chokor um, Sahib today, you can create hundreds of thousands of more. And in fact, in the next two years, he converted almost 150 to 200,000 new Khalsa. All right? Point to be noted. So by 1707, Aurangzeb has died. His son, Bahadur Shah, is in the middle of a civil war. So these Mughals were crazy, okay? They were cruel, very cruel, uh, even to each other. The families were like, they're crazy. They're, they're like, brother fights brother, they killed each other. Brother killed, Aurangzeb killed four of his brothers to become an emperor. He jailed his father to become emperor, right? So now there's, Bahadur Shah is Aurangzeb's son. He's the emperor of India. He leaves and goes on travel, and his son tries to overthrow his father, all right? So now there's a war for succession, and Bahadur Shah calls on Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj to come and help him, right? So Guru Sahib decides that Punjab needs to be changed. Uh, this cruelty, oppression in Punjab, especially in Sarhan, has to be changed. So Wazir Khan has to be punished. And so he goes to Bahadur Shah, he tries politically, diplomatically to do this, okay? He talks to Bahadur Shah and says, this is what's going on in Punjab, and things need to change. So Bahadur Shah gives him, like politicians do, hopes, promises, whatever. So Guru Sahib then decides to help him in the battle against his son. Guru Sahib kills his son, actually, with his arrow. And Bahadur Shah is very grateful. And he invites him to Delhi. And in Delhi, he actually, this is a beautiful painting of Guru Sahib coming to meet the emperor of India in Delhi. This is just a couple years after can you imagine, 1707, 1704, <laughs> the Delhi authorities kill the four sons of Guru Gobind Singh and within three years he's actually being honored at the Delhi Darbar. So Bahadur Shah actually comes down from his throne and comes to meet Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. Okay? He's so grateful and, and he almost becomes, um, he, he starts, grows very fond of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. Yes? Sahib killed Aurangzeb's son, but you said Grandson. Grandson, okay. Bahadur Shah's son, who was rebelling against his father. So Guru Sahib again talks to him and says, you know, the situation in Punjab is very oppressive, and you need to remove Wazir Khan, all right, who's the governor of Punjab. And Bahadur Shah does his, yeah, 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 okay, whatever. So Guru Sahib understands that he has to now take this task upon himself. So now, all right, just to give you the map again, Amritsar, Delhi, there's Agra. Okay, so the battle was fought in Agra. Guru Sahib goes back to Delhi. Now he decides to take the Khalsa down to Gandhi. Okay, so the march down here, I mean, this is like 100, 150 days. This is not uh, <laughs> take a train or you take a flight and you're there in two hours, okay? So it takes almost, Two, three months, three, three, four months. So he ends up now uh, in Nader. Who else is in Nader? Ashwan Das, right? Madhu Das Bairagi. So Guru Sahib uh, goes to his Dera. So he goes to his ashram um, and <laughs> he sits on his bed. All right? Comes and sits on Madhu Das's bed. So as usual, Madhu Das comes, he sees this man. And he tries with his powers to throw him off the bed. And he can't do it. His powers are not working on Guru Gobind Singh. Take it up. So the famous meeting now of Madhu Das with Guru Gobind Singh. Take it. And he asks him, who are you? Madhu Das asks Guru Gobind Singh Ji, who are you? And Guru Gobind Singh Ji answers, he who, who you have been waiting for. 
when we do Simran, we are on our spiritual journey. We are waiting for that moment of darshan, right? That moment of connection with the divine, right? So this is the outward connection with the divine. He tells him, I want you to close your eyes and answer your own question. So Madhav Das Bairagi closes his eyes, internally goes into his man, uplifts his spiritual uh, level, right? And he sees the manifestation of Guru the real manifestation. Okay? And then he opens his eyes, and Guru Gobind Singh Ji says, then who are you now? You know who I am, who are you? And Madhav Das Bairagi answers, I am your Banda literally means slave. It can also mean your guy, your man. Okay, Banda is a guy. You say this is my guy, right? Right. So literally means slave. But it can also be. So he's Guru Gobind Singh's guy. He goes, I'm, I'm your man. Right. There's a lot of paintings about this meeting, so I found several. So I'm sharing it with you. So it's a very beautiful. Another uh, painting. Yeah. Isn't there a whole movie about this guy? Yeah. Like the animation one? Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, the sequel to the to, sorry, to the Yes, story. correct. Yeah. And this one, which I'm amazed. So it's like half on set and half. Christian apostles. <laughs> I think it's their muscles. No, Jack, man. Oh, Jack. What are they doing? Yeah, how do they get better? All right, so, Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj then baptizes Banda the and loves. makes him Banda Singh. Yes. Uh, yes, young man. Question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, point of clarification. Um, so, you said Guru Gobind Singh Ji was going to now take care of Wazir Khan, right? So, to remove yep. Wazir Khan from, from the job. Um, so that's in the north. So what is Guru Sahib's motivation for going south to Nandaya for Well, that's that's a very good question. So that is a question that we should ask. Well, what was what was the attraction that he had to find Pandas? When you keep, we are yeah. sun sifais, right? Guru Gobind Singh was looking for a sun first, uh, one who has this power, has a spiritual energy, who can uh, digest, who can take the spiritual energy that is needed to become a Sant Sipai. Okay. And he goes, so that's interesting. He didn't go to a Sikh. He went to a Hindu Bairagi. So that is something we should think about also. Why did he go all the way to the South? First of all, it was destined that this yeah. was going to happen. It's one thing. But we can also say that he chose a Sant first, not a Sipai. Sant Sipai means saint soldier, right? So he didn't, cho cho he didn't choose a soldier and said, I'm going to make you a saint. He chose a saint and said, I'm going to make you a soldier. Yes? Good so question. That that's an excellent that question. Was destined, right? Yeah, it's part destiny, but that's something we can think about. There's no, maybe that's, my answer is not exactly right, but that is a question. That's a good question. This, this boy asks very good questions. Like father makes one. Looking in a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, not yet. <laughs> I used to look exactly like that. That's true. All right, so then Guru Sahib tells him about the Sikh, Sikh history, right? He relays all the stories from Guru Arjan Dev Ji Shahidi, what the Mughals did, uh, to Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji Shahidi, to the Shahidi of the uh, Sahib Zadeh, right? He tells him all about Sikh history. Um, but Nasing Bahadur now is, is like beyond himself and, you know, this kind of cruelty that's going on in this country. So he's like, uh, and he's already accepted Guru Sahib. So we remember now, <coughs> Wazir Khan, just to review, Wazir Khan was instrumental in uh, implementing Aurangzeb's hateful policies in north of India, right? So he uh, ruled with an iron fist, and uh, so the Chote Sahib Zadeh were caught, right? And this is Wazir Khan, he was the governor, and he is the one that uh, orchestrated their shahidi, right? When they were bricked in the wall. And then, remember, after that, he wouldn't even give space for them to be cremated. He made this man, Todermal, pay in gold for the space just to, such a cruel man, right? Just to cremate them, just a space to cremate them. So 
another painting. So this is Wazir Khan. If you remember, this other character was Devan Suchanan, who will come later in the story. Devan Suchanan was one of the advisors of Wazir Khan, a Hindu. And then there was the Qazi, right? Suchanan said, the children of a snake are still snakes. Sapde bache sapo Saying that <laughs> Guru Gobind Singh Ji is a snake, his children will be also snakes. And they should be killed right now before they grow up and they bite you. This is what he said. Devan Suchanan, in the open court, called the children of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj little snakes. Okay? And said that they should be killed. The Qazi said, Wazir Khan said that why do you have it's not allowed in Islam to drop the blood of innocents on the ground. So the Qazi said, why do you have to drop their blood? Just put them in a wall alive and you won't drop any blood. Problem solved. One of the most cruel people, these two, the Qazi and Dewan Sujanan, and this is Wazir Khan. Alright, so it's kind of the lay of the land here. So Sarhan was actually uh, one of the most richest parts of Aurangzeb's India, all right? It's like New York City is today. New York City is not the capital of the United States, but without a doubt, it's the financial capital of the world, right? They used to say that if Sarhan sneezes, Delhi gets a fever, all right? It's a saying in Punjabi, it works better in Punjabi. Would you like to hear it in Punjabi? Yes. 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 Good? That sounds better in Punjabi. Okay. <laughs> I agree. Sarhan sneezes, Dili gets a fever. You, you're following. Sarhan was so important that if anything happens in Sarhan, Delhi gets, Delhi gets shaken, like the capital of India gets shaken. Sarhan was extremely wealthy, extremely powerful, and uh, a the most important part of all of uh, Aurangzeb's empire, okay? So this is Sarhan. This is the problem area. Just to show you, uh, there's Jammu, there's Amritsar, Anandpur Sahib, right? There is Sarhan. So Sarhan is not just a town. Sarhan is also this entire kind of uh, like the county. You could say like North Jersey or New Jersey. So the entire county is called Sarhan, like New York State and New York City, similarly. So Wazir Khan now learns that Guru Gobind Singh Ji is getting close to Bahadur Shah, they're becoming chummy, becoming friends, and he's a little concerned. So he sends two assassins to try to kill Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. They come in the dead of night, and they try to, uh, he stabs Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj two times. Um, Guru Gobind Singh Ji kills him, he does survive, and it was really slow. All right, Bandasing Bahadur then, um, by the way, you know that date I gave you, that their first meeting was September 3rd, 1708. Do you know how they figure that out? The stories go that there was an ex eclipse on the day that they met, like a solar eclipse. So <laughs> Dr. Supreet Singh Udoke actually went to, these, to the records of 1708 and found out that there was a solar eclipse on September 3rd that year. Is that amazing? This guy was smart. So we have the exact date that they met. Anyway, so by se October 1708, all right, so a month later, Guru Gobind Singh Ji now sends uh, Banda Singh Bahadur on a mission to Punjab. Okay, they're all the way to the south of Nandir. So to put a stop to the cruelty of the Punjab rulers. Kripa. Uh, um, Punish the? Punish the guilty and cruel rulers. Uh -huh. To fight for human rights, uplift and strengthen the poor, the low enslaved, like people who could not even imagine freedom. Right, so try to understand the Mughals have ruled for like four or five hundred years. People think no one can defeat them. People are born into this indentured servitude to these oppressive masters. Uh, they can't live freely, they can't worship freely, and they basically die at the age of 40, right, in servitude, miserable and the next generation gets born and do the same thing over and over. So they could not even, this is, don't take this lightly. Okay, we are born in freedom, so we don't know any other kind of life. These were, people were not born in freedom. They were born in oppression, okay? And the Mughals had this aura that no one could ever defeat them. All right, so think about that too. 
So Guru blessed him with hukumnamas to the Sikh Sangats to tell them that he was now the leader uh, of the Sikh armies and that they should be uh, um, ally, allied uh, to him. Uh, he gave him five arrows, uh, a khanda, a big nagara. A nagara is an expression of freedom. Okay? It, it, it announces to the world that we are free. All right? Even when we beat it down, in, uh, we beat the drum in the bar hall, it's an expression, we're telling the world, we're telling each other that the Khalsa is free. All right? It's announcing to the world that the Khalsa is free. And so he gave him a... You were actually not allowed to beat uh, Nagara. Only Aurangzeb, the emperor of India, for his entrance, the Nagara could be beaten. It was unthinkable that anybody else could beat the Nagara. Uh, he gave him Nishan Sam, and he gave him five, six uh, for counseling and 25 six to protect them, bodyguards. So these are the five six that he was given. Ba Singh and Fateh Singh were brothers. Baba Bin Singh and Kahan Singh were father son. And there was another man, Ran Singh. Okay, so these are the five advisors that he is gonna take their advice on everything that he does. All right, so now he marches to Punjab. All right, so again to the map, all the way down here. It's about 150 days to get from here to here if you're marching. He took almost a year, all right? It's thought that he stopped along the way. Uh, he was collecting armies. He was collecting money. Um, and he was hiding from the Mughals also. They were trying to kill him. They had gotten this message that this man is coming north to Punjab. And so at certain times, he was in trouble also. Um, the five advisors, the Panj Piyare, that he were there to advise him, told him that whenever you're in trouble, uh, do ardas. He was out of money many times. And whenever he did ardas, he goes the same day, the next day, six hundreds would come with their daswan and give him money. And he was just amazed at how this, how this works. So he was getting money from the six sangat, and people were flocking to him to join his army, okay? What he promised was a removal of oppression in the north of India. So slowly, as he reaches Punjab, all right, uh, who wants to read this? He did. Listening to the call of Banda Singh at the behest of the Guru. Listening to the call of Banda Singh at the behest of the Guru, Singh started joining Banda Singh. In a short period, Banda Singh had 4,000 first rounds and 7,800 artillery sits with him. After some more time, the strength of 40,000 warriors was at his command. His army was constituted by four types of people. The true followers all over from Punjab, Bhagwa, Kandar, Mughan, and Kashmir. God fearing Muslims who had been always with the Guru in Muslim fights. They were downtrodden and low caste who had always been subjected to torture. In February 1709, he started attacking various towns and conquered various areas of Punjab. So he's gathered all kinds of people. Six Sangats, the Khalsa now knows he's going now to defeat Wazir Khan. There's a lot of anger now in the Six Sangat, and they're flocking to him because they need to be part of this, um, this revenge, really, taking care of punishing Wazir Khan. So they want to be part of it, okay? Muslims, poor Muslims, are also flocking to Banda Singh Bahadur uh, because he's promising to release them from this servitude that there are in this feudal system, and downtrodden, low caste people. All right, preparations. First, uh, one of the first major towns he took, he took a lot of small towns, was Samana. Okay, it's a city of 22 noble families. Um, so now he's all the way up here. This is the Suba of Saran. This is the whole area of Saran. There is Samana. Samana is the town where the executioners of Gurdeg Bahadurji lived and the executioners of the Chote Sahibs are there also lived. So that's what he did first. He attacked Samana, killed the, um, the two uh, executioners who ripped alive the Sahibs are there, and also Jalaluddin was executed, the man who executed Guru Dev Bahadur Sahib Maharaj. All right. Samana also has had the mint so they used to make coins there. So now he had access to all the money of Sarhan. OK? 
Okay, so now he's got a rich um, treasure, uh, a rich chest, money chest. Uh, so he gives instructions to the Khalsa Fawad also that no jewelry from any woman should be taken, no looting should take place, and no masjid should be destroyed. Okay, when you're angry, you go into a town, you're angry that, I mean, the whole thing was become Muslim or we're going to kill you, the Chote Zahid So you want to take retribution on a mosque, right, or on the Qazis that do this. But that's the Khalsa moral stand is never to uh, destroy a house of worship. Uh, or to loot anything that's not yours. So now, this is now October of 2009. I'm sorry, December of 2009. So now he's making preparations to attack Sarhan. Okay, this is a well fortified area. So he sends messages to all the Khalsa around the job. So for Amritsar, there's a huge amount of Khalsa that come down just for the sole purpose of punishing Wazir Khan. Okay? Banda Singh Bahadur actually waits for them. Okay? He wants to include the entire Khalsa in this punishment. All right? So from Malwa, Duaba, and uh, Majha, all the six who have received Hukam Namaz are now marching towards Sarhan. All right? He waits for them. And by waiting, he's also giving Wazir Khan a chance to fortify his, his own uh, thing. But he says this is a joint effort of all the Khalsa and we should all be involved. So he does wait. So the armies of Amritsar also come down. Okay, so now Wazir Khan's army is at the day of the battle. He has 28 battalions, 40 cannons, 49,000 horsemen. Bandha Singh has 4,000 horse riders. That's a big discrepancy. Uh, 7,800 artillery, and he's got 40,000 warriors. More than half of them are armed with pickaxes and farming tools. Okay, they're coming here to they're going to fight this battle uh, with guns and cannons, and they have like farming tools. But they are inspired. Yes, sir? You know, um, I heard that a lot of people have farming tools also need, like, made to be used as weapons. Mm -hmm. Because like farming and like like battle is like the two of the most important things in growing a civilization. So a lot of farming tools were made to be weapons. Interesting. Yeah. Probably true. That's that's across across the board. He actually doesn't have any cannons, and he attacks um, Mustafa Bad. It's a small town where they make cannons, and he fires ten to fifteen cannons just so that they have some cannons. Yes. Uh, just to get some context, a battalion is about a thousand warriors at that time, so we're battling about two to one. Yes. Say it again. A battalion is about a thousand warriors. So. Right. Yeah, we were outnumbered. Yeah. But we were definitely angrier than them and inspired. So, just to give you context, the Battle of Sarhan begins May 12, 1710. The Shahidi of the Chote Sahib Zadi was December 1704. What is that? Five and a half years, guys? Yeah, yeah probably. Right? Five and a half years? So, within five and a half years of this very dark day, the Khalsa has. Uh, come to punish the uh, perpetrators of this horrible, horrible crime. Yes? I just wanted to point out that the Muslim cannons were also of higher, uh, higher quality at the time. Yes, but we actually took cannons made by, uh, we yes. from Mustafabad. So of the same caliber. But we had much less. We had maybe 10, 15 cannons. So the attack begins May 12th, 1710. Very ferocious battle is waged. There's a lot of anger among the six. I mean, we are we are here to get this guy. Okay, we are here to get Devan Suchanand. We're here to get the Qazi, and we're here to get Wazir Khan. Okay, it's been five and a half years. We have a chance now to punish these horrible, horrible people. And first, Devan Suchanand is killed. Okay, they find him. He runs. They chase him and they kill him. Uh, the Qazi is killed, and Wazir Khan actually comes into the battle. This is the painting made of the killing of Wazir Khan. Fateh Singh and Baz Singh find Wazir Khan. Um, he throws a spear at Baz Singh's sword. Uh, I'm sorry, Baz Singh throws a spear at Wazir Khan's horse. The horse falls. Uh, and Fateh Singh is the man credited with beheading 
وزیر خان کہہ رہا ہے کارا So then now Wazir Khan is killed and they go, um, uh, the, the army scatters. Oh, what they did was they took off Wazir Khan's head, they put it on a spear, they climbed on his elephant and they showed his severe, uh, severed head to the entire Mughal army. They saw the cut off head of their governor and they ran. Okay, oh my God, <laughs> he's dead, he's killed. This is what they did. They cut his head off and they put it on top of an elephant. Right? So the army runs now, the Khalsa army uh, wants to now enter the fort of Sarhan. Okay, so they, they have cannons, they, they breach a hole. The next day, it took them a full day to get in. Okay, from, but they did get in and they are cr going crazy. Okay, the Khalsa army is like, they find uh, the Qazi, they kill the Qazi, um, and then they find the mosque where the Qazi does his, his namaz, and they're going to tear down the mosque. Okay, they're so angry, they're going to burn down the mosque. But Nasim Bahadur comes in between them, and he stops them. Okay, he just puts his soldiers there, and he says, no. Guru Gobind Singh Ji's hukam was not to dis destroy any masjid. So we are not going to do that. And there's two paintings of this moment. So this masjid, yeah, those are other houses. This is the masjid. He tore down Vizier Khan's palace, completely destroyed it. Devan Sutanan's house, they tore that down. They were going to tear down the whole city, but the nothing then stopped it. So now he's one Sarhan, which is kind of taking over New York City. Okay, you, you own the <laughs> country. Right. All right. Uh, so Banda Singh now ushers a time of peace. Um, and he strikes coins, okay? He builds 52 more forts. He built the fort of Logart, which was his headquarters. Um, and he begins a time of great peace in um, Punjab, okay? He strikes coins in the name of Guru Nanak and Guru Gobind Singh. They mint coins. These are boys and girls, Khalsa, my little Khalsas. These are our first Khalsa coins, okay? Um, it says, coin struck for the two worlds with the grace of the true Lord, Nanak the provider and the victory of the sword of Guru Gobind Singh Ji, King of Kings. All right? He doesn't write his own name. He doesn't write Bandha Singh Bahadur's kingdom. He writes Guru Nanak, Guru Gobind Singh. Uh, and in the name of the Khalsa Takhat, I strike these coins. Right. This is in Farsi. Um, yeah, this is in Farsi. Right? Yeah, this Farsi. is in Farsi, in Persian. Yeah, Farsi. Exactly. So it's not even Urdu. It's in Farsi. Did they speak Farsi? That, like that was the official language. Oh, no. I mean, this kind of leads me to say, like people who say, "Oh, you guys speak English, this and that, and Punjabi and whatever." This is during the Khalsa. We didn't write this in Punjabi either, right? This is in Farsi. The first, uh, which was kind of the English of its time. It was the language of the courts. The official language was in Farsi. Anytime you wrote an of official document, that was in Farsi. So it's like now if you write a document, it's in English. Um, one more very important thing. He ended the feudal system, OK? Um, he ended, this is really, really important, OK? There was a landowner system in Punjab where the Mughals would take over and then the guy who was the most horrible out of them was given like 20 villages. Like, this is your territory. So he would bleed out those 12 villages his entire life. They were horrible. I mean, the whole feudal system, same like you had in Europe, where you had a lord and everybody else, your whole life you were working for that lord. Similar thing was in Punjab. There were these Mughal landowners and your entire life, the farmers were working for that 
um, that one landowner. He abolished all the landowners, said you don't own this anymore. Those people, you were working this farm, this is your land now. You were working this farm, this is your land now. Official documents were written to give these landowners uh, ownership of this land. And he totally destroyed the entire feudal system of Punjab. Okay? People have said the landowners of today of Punjab, the Jats, okay? The Jats were uh, peasants in those days. Okay? They were given lands by Banda Singh Bahadur. And today, the rich landowners of Punjab can trace that gift that was given to them by Banda Singh Bahadur. All right? These are very rich landowners of Punjab today. They were peasants at this time. They were part of the oppressed. I'm going to get to you. They were part of the oppressed. Banda Singh Bahadur freed them and gave them official documents of ownership of land. All right? Yes? When did the, is this like the end of Mughal Empire? Did they collapse? No. No, no. He ruled for five years. It was the decline. It was part of the decline. Listen, when you try to kill an entire huge monster, you wound them once, then it comes back at you, you wound them again, comes back at you again, you wound them again, finally it, it dies. It took almost 50 years to destroy the, completely destroy the Mughal Empire and establish the Sikh missiles which led to the Sikh Raj uh, in the end of the 1700s. Okay? Um, there were constant battles with the Afghans. Uh, within five years, they did capture Bandar Singh Bahadur, and he was tortured. And, uh, but we don't have time for that. Didn't he also have a son? Yes, a just. Wasn't that son killed as well? Yes. yes. So Farooq Sayyar, sorry, run through it. So he's surrounded at this, uh, the uh, fort of Gundas Nangal. Uh, he's captured. They were all hungry. They were uh, surrounded for eight months. So they're starved out, and they, uh, he, the Mughals were given um, orders by Farooq Sayyar to capture him alive. He wanted to get him to Delhi and bow before him. He said, I want all of India to see Banda Singh bowing before me. So don't kill him. So they stormed the fort, they captured him. They paraded him in this cage. The, there were only 325 Khalsa left in the fort at that time, okay? Um, and they were so embarrassed, they said, we're gonna to walk to Delhi with 300 prisoners, and people are gonna say, this guy kept you away for eight months, and you, for 300 soldiers. So on the way, they gathered other six from the Rasta, they chopped their heads off, and they piled them onto spikes, and they paraded them as they came in. Almost 3,000 Khalsi uh, lost their lives. They weren't even the soldiers of Bandasi Bahadur, but on the way, they went to villages, cut their heads off and put them on spikes and march them into Delhi to impress the emperor. So here, they start to kill a hundred Khalsa every day. Everyone is given the choice of accepting Islam or being killed. Not a single one accepted Islam. They all chose to be executed. All right? They executed almost 2,000 within a few months. Almost like six months after he was captured, that he's brought, he's given the same choice of accepting Islam. But nothing asked Farooq Sayyid, he goes, How many of my, the other people that you captured, the Khalsa, how many of them accepted Islam? So he doesn't answer him. He answer, asks him again, I asked you, how many of them accepted? He goes, None of them. So he laughs, he goes, Why, why do you think I'm going to accept Islam? Do what you need to do. It was a horrific torture. They pinched out his, uh, he asked him, how do you want to die? Farooq Sayyid asks him, how do you want to die? And Banda Singh Bahadur in chains, starving, tells him, however you want to die, you can kill me. He's so brave. He says, whatever you do to me will happen to you. All right? So Farooq Sayyid just uh, pushes him aside. They pulled his eyes out. One by one, they cut off his arms, they pinched his uh, flesh out, um, they killed his son actually, they put his son in his lap and told him to kill, kill his own son. And he says to Farooq Sayyar, that even if you put your son in my lap, I wouldn't kill him. He goes, I'm not uh, unkind and I'm not, uh, I, I have compassion. So they killed his son, Ajay Singh. Um, 
And so he asks him, uh, that where is your guru? What happened to your guru? How come you're in this condition? So he goes, no, 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 this is not what happened. He, he answers him, when there's a race of people so corrupt and wicked in the world, the divine sends a wretched man like me to balance the scales. Because you guys have done so such horrible things. He sent me, I balanced the scales, I went a little too far. Because I went a little too far, so what you're doing now to me? He goes, it's just balancing the scales. We're good. He was in such kind already. He was in Anandavas that mattered, did not matter that they had pulled out his eyes. It did not matter that they had pinched his skin off. Uh, he was executed uh, on this day in June uh, 17. But he established the first Sikh Raj within 10 years. Not, five or two years of Guru Sahib's passing away. Guru Gobind Singh Ji passed in 1708. 1710 he had established the Sikh Raj and taken and punished the evildoers of the world. And he had eradicated the myth that the Mughals could never be defeated. All right? Um, within a year, Farooq Sayer's brother revolts against his brother. He imprisons him, pulls out his eyes, pinches out his, uh, all his mass, and he executes him in the same manner that he did to Bandha Singh Bahadur, within a year. So Bandha Singh Bahadur's words rang true. Yes. How did uh, Bandha Singh support just like, like, well, they had a massive army when they uh, invaded. The Mughals still had a lot of people. Okay. It was Guru's Bakshish that he, he was able to do this much. It was the amazing, it's Vismad that he could do this much. Sorry. Yes, Sajid. Um, did they also kill his son? Who's? Um, the Ajayasin? No, the guy who killed Bangladesh and Mahadev. No, 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 no. He said that even if you put your son in yeah. my lap, I would never kill him. Yeah. He's telling how compassionate it is. As reciprocation of... Oh, no, 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 no. No. That's not funny. That's it. That is the story of Bandha Singh Bahadur. Sorry, I had to go a little bit fast. I hope, uh, this is part of our history, guys. This is part of your history. And you're all a part of Khalsa history also. And what you do in this world will also maybe one day be taught in another Gurmat class. All right? Be proud of who you are. Right? We, are, we have amazing ancestors who, from where we have come. Always be proud of who you are. Be amazed at these people and the bakshish of Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj and the mehr and the energy that Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj gave us. Bye, Guruji Kakhatsa.